Manziel is giving us a UAKR. Stormwatch radar forecast is next. Good morning. Good morning. Is this a good morning or what? For it's page one for news, sports, traffic, and what? Well, we Start the morning well. Now, here's Ray. All right. 1590 WAKR in 12 minutes after 9 o'clock, 9-12. So the Browns have announced it. Brian Hoyer is now their starting quarterback. So that uh, discussion is calm, at least for the next couple of weeks. Uh, well, speaking of football and such, joining us live right now is Jason Mass, and him and his crew are putting together a movie out at the Rubber Bowl pertaining to the Akron Vulcans of the Continental Football League that played at the Rubber Bowl. And Jason, thanks for joining us on the show, and where in the world did you come up with the idea for this project? Well, geez, uh, Ray, first of all, thanks for having me on. Um, my... This story comes right from my heart. Uh, my father passed away three years ago, um, played professional football, but never spoke about it to me. Um, immediately after his death, the next day, I found tons of football memorabilia of his that was magically put on a desk that I did hundreds and thousands of hours of homework. Uh, in it was this uh, very unique helmet and had a symbol on it. I didn't know what the heck it was. Um, also, there was a, uh, a jersey that I thought was from the, from the Miami Dolphins. My dad had played a stint with the Dolphins. Yes. Researched it, found out that this was the Akron Vulcans of 1967, and I discovered an unbelievable story of the promise of professional football to the boomtown of Akron, Ohio, done by a complete swindler and con man by the name of Frank Hearn, he bamboozled the whole city. The team was canceled after four games. There's hundreds of stories surrounding it. Um, on my trip last week to Akron, I met a gentleman that had invested $100 in stock, and uh, <laughs> he uh, never received anything. So, what, Jason, what happened? And then we'll get to your dad a little bit and the, and the Vulcans and stuff. How did he swindle? How did he get away with it? What happened? Well, Akron at that time was an absolute boomtown with what the, years uh, the are we production talking? of tires, and everyone was making tons of money. He promised professional football, and he paid awesome players and awesome coaches, promised them double the salary. Uh, problem is, he never had any money. There's, there are mob ties. Nobody ever got paid. No supplier, no innkeeper. They finally, uh, he finally was arrested. Uh, they were able to get him on the charges of defrauding an innkeeper. Okay, so there must have been, what, was, there, was there uniforms and all this stuff issued? Because this brings us back to your father then about the football team. Go, go down that road for me. Well, the story is, after the fourth game, the, the, during the fourth game, the players refused to take the field. They had not gotten paid. Nobody had gotten paid anything. My dad was one of the leaders of the team, uh, as was Mr. Bob Meeker. They said, guys, we're not playing. We're not taking the field. Um, the commissioner came in and actually stole gate receipts from the Wheeling Ironman. They were in a opposing stadium and put uh, $400 in 35 piles in the locker room, they said, go take the field now. The players refused to take the field without taking the money. They stuffed it in their jock straps and their shoulder pads. And they went out and came back from a 28 to nothing halftime deficit uh, to bring the score to 28 to 27. And then something miraculous happened as far as football. Hmm. So was that the last game for the Vulcans then? That was the last game. The <laughs> laundromat refused to release the uniforms. The league closed down the team. The uniforms were confiscated, uh, as was confirmed. They were at the Summit County Courthouse, uh, where I was just last week, and I spoke to Mr. Pierce, who was actually a, an assistant prosecuting attorney. Remembered the case well, 80-year-old man. Uh, somehow, some players got in, and I understand it was just kind of a free-for-all take what you can get the rest of the uniforms and jerseys were auctioned off i understand that there's a couple more jerseys that exist but as far as this helmet goes it's the only one that we know in existence jason mass is with us he is putting together a movie on the rubber bowl and the akron vulcan so where are you with the project then jason well 
I've been researching it for a couple of years now. Uh, I've got three of our main actors in place, and uh, I have finished writing what I can write with the knowledge that we have that's based on the facts. The story ends after the fourth game. That was it. It was over. Now, we've invented a Hollywood script for the end of the movie that uh, I'm super excited about. But the next step in what I came to Akron for last week was to meet actual men that had firsthand knowledge and women uh, that have actual firsthand knowledge of the Akron Vulcans and the 1967 era. Uh, it was a fascinating time, and just going into the bars, into the VFW halls, the country clubs, the supermarket, I have met and networked with literally hundreds of people in Akron, and I would guesstimate that at least half of the people that I've run into are so fascinated by the story uh, that they just go down memory lane. It was a time and an era where they're not proud of because people got ripped off. Yeah. But it's still a fascinating time. And uh, did you see the picture I emailed you of yeah. the, 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 the 75 year old gentleman staring at the helmet and wearing the jersey, Ray? Yeah, I did. Fascinating. Great. Uh, Jason, let me ask you this. When you put this movie and start filming, will you do any filming in Akron? We are going to do. Everything that we can in Akron. Uh, one of my friends uh, is a Hollywood veteran of 18 years, and we could do this thing in a barn, okay, with the, with the <laughs> technology that they have. But we want to be in Akron. We want to use Akron people. We can fill a stadium with computer-generated people. We want to fill it with Akron people. We want to use local suppliers. You know, I was talking to my Hollywood friend, and I said, you know, well, we, we need a Midwestern bartender for the film. So we're going to go to Hollywood and ask them to cast a Midwestern bartender when there's a pretty young lady right here that's studying fashion that her professor wants to do the uniforms right here at Akron. It would be silly to use people from elsewhere. Jason, let me ask you this. Our conversation has probably ignited a lot of memory lane people who remember that time, who remember the story. If people would like to get a hold of you, maybe give you some feedback, giving you some add-ons to the story. Do you have a website, Facebook, phone number people can get a hold of you? Yes, indeed. And uh, one of the things that we've been toying with is, is having a little reunion and getting these people together. But right now, uh, you doing this and the Beacon Journal might be doing a piece is great. I would like people to call me directly. Uh, I will take their phone call. We have a website, uh, and it illustrates the, the story, and it's got some, some, great, some great pictures, a little bit of a script. That's www.rubberbowlthemovie.com. Simple, Rubber Bowl the Movie. Uh, my personal cell phone number, I'm going to give it out, is 713 eight two three two one four three uh and i have an email address is jason mass j-a-s-o-n-m-a-s-s -S -S, at ntouch that's spelled edward nancy t-o-u-c-h dot net all right please give me a little time i've i've got <laughs> two players uh you know, I was, at the, I was having lunch, and, and, and two guys came up to me, and they said, holy cow, is that the Akron Vulcans? These guys were around, around my age. Their, their uncle played. Our uncle played. Oh, my gosh, he's got so many stories. I still have to, to interview uh, uh, number 20, Rodney Dingle. Well, Jason, you listen, you keep me updated on the progress of the pro uh, project. We'll get you on from time to time when you want to give an update and such, and we certainly would like to help you get the word out and get more information on the rubber bowl and the Vulcans and stuff. So thanks for joining us this morning. <clears throat> People, give him a call. Go to his webpage if you want to get more information. And, Jason, we'll talk to you real soon. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Ray, and thank you for the people to the people of Akron, Ohio. All right, Jason Mass putting together a movie on the Akron Rubber Bowl, and in particular, the Vulcans of the Continental Football League. Here's an update on money and business. We can see a slow start on Wall Street.